in general, um, I was thinking about it actually the other day when I was coming back home because I had a bit of a shitty day or something, just you know, just thinking about you know the kind of stuff I want to do and the situation I'm kind of in, being locked into full time employment, just kind of it saps your time. You know, that's one thing that I feel about. I feel, <sighs> I think sometimes when you have a job, right? I think you can get some kind of satisfaction. Maybe if you're earning a certain amount, right, it's a wage that maybe allows you to dream and to think of projects you can do allows you to maybe spec out some equipment you want to buy maybe plan a trip that you want to go do some filming on or maybe um invest in something or buy some more stock or whatever right there's there are the jobs you can get that earn you enough money where you can kind of start plotting and plotting your plans for the future but there are also those kind of jobs that you get that you just feel as if they're just taking your time away from you right they're in that weird threshold there's a very strange threshold of, of money that you get paid where it's enough to obviously sustain you and keep you alive and, you know, allow you to do a couple of festivals here and there and maybe go to a gig or two or maybe take somebody out for dinner or grab a couple of drinks. Cool. But then there's also um, that thing in the back of your head that's sort of like you're wasting your time, right? Because you get your job done, let's say, by lunchtime or free and you spend the rest of the day pretending to work, which I'm sure everyone else has the same sort of issue for the most part, I think. Most people outside of upper management, because I think, you know, a lot of people kind of have dreams of becoming managers or earning those kind of big bucks. But really that kind of job as well for somebody that, you know, if you're the kind of person that um, nips away to the toilet and sits down for 10 minutes to go on your phone, you're probably not going to be the best manager, right? Because managers are uniquely required to deal with people's bullshit on a day in day out basis right you're essentially a firefighter the entire day you're a psychologist a psychiatrist um and you just basically have to put up with people's stuff right you're their mother you're their you're their father um you're their uncle you're their auntie you're just you're just an emotional support system in general so in in theory that money you're getting on top of it is basically for you to deal with everybody's mental bullshit that they bring into your doorstep which probably is part of the job but again you know you're sacrificing your mental health or your mental um cap or your you know the uh, you're kind of diminishing your mental capabilities by um you know consistently putting yourself in front of people who are then unloading their um hearts and heartaches and troubles and worries onto you on a daily basis which can get a bit overwhelming so sometimes you know you can wish for those kind of things once you get it you're like oh shit so yeah so lately i've been you know i had a couple of things you know had those kind of thoughts where you're like oh man i'm wasting time this supplement my time but as per usual you know with these sort of things i'm I've, i'm always in two minds i'm always i've always i always kind of feel i feel sometimes um i oftentimes feel quite guilty when i get those kind of feelings because i'm also cognitively aware of how easy it is not to have a job or not to have a source of income that's allowing you to eat sleep and shit so um as much as i can be annoyed by that kind of thing i always have to be internally grateful that the universe or whatever is out there conspiring in my favor has allowed me to have any job whatever it pays whatever it does right in order for me to sustain myself and those around me so i'm thankful for it yeah really i'm thankful for it but um one of the things that really helps me to kind of keep myself grounded and stop being so like you know um you know just annoyed by the whole situation is to work out and if you're wondering why I kind of work out like a freak or why I do these weird, crazy things like trying to read a book a week or trying to just push myself as much as I can physically and mentally, it's because those are the things that actually keep me um, from going insane, right? From dealing with this kind of nine to five drudgery that I kind of have to go through day in, day out. And um, it can be annoying, right? But those things really do help to counterbalance it. Because if I don't have it, I start to get into my head. I start to think about, you know, oh shit, how come, you know, I have so many... Um, interests or hobbies that i'm obviously into um one or two talents here and there but i can't seem to figure out a way out of this nine to five grind right i can't figure out a way and you know um at the age i am at now and with the people around me who have also done similar things or done you know less than the things that i'm trying to do in their own kind of way i'm just you just sit there thinking fuck man what what is it me am i just not that bright enough or am i just am i just not that bright am i not that because just getting some really brutal because um Brutal analysis because it, it happen, happens a lot in sport, right? I think in football, I, I got conspired against a lot when I used to play Sunday League football, right? I got like, you know, I, I had to deal with some fucking shitty managers, but ultimately, you know, it's no stretch to say that maybe I just wasn't good enough for the football team that I was playing for, right? So I got I got subbed, and then eventually you lose interest because you're a little, you know, you want to play football, so you don't, you stop playing, right? 
you might develop over like, over over some years. I'm I'm probably better than a lot of people. I, I assume because you know I come from an area where there's a high concentration of really good football players. So I'm probably not as good as everyone else around me, but I'm better than most people in the country, right? It's that kind of law of average. All right, no problem. But at least with sports, you get told quite quickly, or you get some feedback. You have a feedback loop that kind of tells you, okay, cool, maybe you're not as good as you think you are. No problem. But in life, you don't really get that feedback loop that doesn't exist, right? Because some people don't make it because of their obvious talent. Some people don't make it because of their hard work. Some people just make it through pure convenience, right? Um, for instance, if you're a photographer in a small town or taking part in a small scene and you take all the photographs for the culture, right? The scene that you're in, going to nightclubs, you go to gigs, you go to exhibitions, whatever it may be. If you happen to be the first crop of people doing it, there'll be, you know, there'll be the same kind of lot of people putting the same photos out and it'll get a bit boring, right? But then I'll, I'll, what, there, will, there will come a time, I think I have you mentioned it the other day actually about um, uh, Black Panther, right? About this, his idea that he's fascinated, I think the Auburn Marcus podcast, he mentioned it recently, that he's fascinated with the idea about this person who was obsessed with Black Panther, didn't think there was anything money in it, but just kept going with Black Panther thing, you know, was collecting the magazines, um, cl- clipping up clips of old videos on YouTube and uploading onto Instagram, just, you know, obsessed with it and built a little community of like 4,000 people. The moment Black Panther, the movie comes out, Marvel are going to hit you up. Brand sponsors are hitting you up. People are hitting you up so they can kind of um, sponsor you or get you to blast out the film on your feed, right? So suddenly you've gone from being this really tiny voice of a tiny scene into now being um, a tiny voice of a big scene, right? Or the big voice of a big scene or whatever it may be called, right? And um, I think success is kind of like that, especially outside of sports. Some people just make it because other people just stop doing what they were doing. So the photographer, for example, right? Some club photographers just stop doing it and they just, you know, they move on to other things. They get family, they get a full-time job or they stop, you know, um, taking drink tokens or 100 quid a night isn't enough for them. Hey! Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. So they head off, right? And I'm fascinated with the idea that there's some club photographers that just that just never stopped, right? And now they are, you know, being flown around to Paris Fashion Weeks and to Design Weeks and to film premieres. All this was all malarkey, all because they just decided not to stop. And part of success is 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 like that, right? So for someone like me who hasn't necessarily hit the heady heights I want to hit, I can sometimes have a false sense of where I am in that journey because. I look around and I see some people that have made it, you know, purely based on their talent. Some people have made it purely based um, based on their talent and their network. Some people made it just from grinding. And other people just made it because they just stuck around long enough to just go through the shitness, right? To kind of eat shit as much as possible and just hang around the longest, right? They had the resilience and they were basically effectively the last man standing, right? And then, or last man, last woman. And there, and here they are presenting all opportunities in the world because there's no one else are available. And then all suddenly you get to kind of like suddenly out of that you get to kind of carve your own lane, and you basically get to have a job for life, right? You only have to look at somebody like a Fraser Cook at Nike is a kind of a good example. Of course, somebody with a great knowledge base, with great contacts, whatever it may be. But in this era, you know, there's you know, I think for the most part, anyone into shoes or clothing is sort of like their own Fraser Cook. Maybe not with the same level of knowledge or expertise or depth, but essentially, it would have been harder for him to have made it in that profession of being that you know the solo Nike energy marketing guy, kind of beating on the sound of his own drum. It would have been so it would have been harder for him to do it nowadays than it would have been back then because it wasn't that many people doing it, especially an English dude who spoke Japanese, who I think has an Asian wife, who you know what I mean, like assimilating that kind of culture. It just made sense that he would be the one to kind of you know carve his own lane and essentially you know it's a job that they can't really rehire for nowadays really there might be a couple of expats around but for a level of knowledge and contacts he has it's sort of like a one-off job and unfortunately you know um hopefully the knowledge will be passed on you know when he decides to move on or whatever it may be but yeah that's kind of where i've been thinking but again the working out and the doing this podcast and stuff really just helps me kind of get out of my mind with that because again like i'm like just hearing myself speak about it is a bit nonsensical because you know i can't control any of these things they're not in my control what i can control is putting out good content, is um, pursuing my DJing, is, you know, writing as much as I can, is reading and expanding my vocabulary in the way that I think, um, and is just continually trying to be creative and trying to make cool things and go from there, really, isn't it? That's all I can do, right? I can't do anything else but that.